Hi everyone. Uh, so today we are going to continue our discussion about uh, multiple pipe systems and uh, this is going to be our last session where we uh, solve an example about a three reservoir multiple pipe system. So I introduced you uh, this problem in the last uh, session and so we have three reservoirs. Uh, the first one is um, the elevation of the first one is at 100 foot, the second one is located at uh, 220 foot elevation and the third one is located at zero foot. <clears throat> we only account for major losses. Uh, the friction factor for all the pipes is assumed to be 0.02 for simplicity. And the diameter of all the pipes is assumed to be uh, is uh, one foot, again for uh, simplicity. And uh, the pipes have different uh, length. The, the first pipe one is uh, 1,000 foot, this one is 500 foot, and this one is 400 foot. And then we want to find the flow rate into or out of each reservoir. So the important part of uh, uh, this kind of problems, and one of the things that, uh, I mean, the challenging part is that we need to <clears throat> find first the direction of the flow. So we are not sure how the flow is uh, changing and how uh, the flow is moving into each uh, reservoir. So in particular, so about uh, reservoir B, we don't know whether the flow is going to come out of it or is going to go into the reservoir. So this one, we can kind of make a uh, guess that it's going to go down because it's uh, elevated uh, at a much higher elevation and this one is at the lowest elevation so it's possibly the water is going to go down but we are not sure about this whether the water is going to out of it or is going to come uh, into uh, the reservoir so as i said the direction of flow in pipe 2 is not clear and what we do in this type of problems is that we assume a um, uh, direction uh, for the flow at the beginning and then we go through the um, governing equations and we see whether we can solve these equations and whether these kind of uh, this direction is going to satisfy all the governing equations which are continuity and uh, momentum uh, conservation equation in um, our problem so first we assume that uh, so this one it seems that the water is going to go out of it and uh, this one we don't know so this one we, it's more possible that the water is going to again down so it's going to go uh, into the reservoir C and for reservoir B we are not sure whether it's going to go out or in so we just assume that the flow is going to go out of reservoir B so in this direction okay so this uh, first assume that and then if uh, our assumption is true then we are going to get uh, the right and we are going to satisfy all the governing equations of uh, flows, uh, pipe flows in this system and otherwise um, we have to change our direction. If we reach to a point where we are not satisfying all the equations, we have to change the direction and then uh, solve for the governing equations again. So we start with the continuity equation. So the continuity equation says that Q1, uh, the flow rate uh, in pipe 1, plus Q2 should equal to Q3. So this is something kind of obvious where we um, kind of talked about it in the three reservoir multiple pipe systems. Uh, so this is uh, what we can uh, say about continuity equation. And, and flow rate is VA, V1A1 plus V2A2 equals to V3A3. And because uh, the pipe diameter in all these three pipes are equal, D1 equals to D2 equals to D3 equals to 1 foot, we can say that uh, V1 plus V2 equals to V3. So we found a relationship for the velocity of uh, pipe 1, pipe 2, and y, pipe 3. And... Uh, based on the continuity equation and we named this uh, equation one because uh, we need the, we need this uh, later so then we write the uh, energy equation from a to c so we write the energy equation from point a to point c 
So it's PA over gamma plus VA square over 2G plus ZA equals to PC over gamma plus VC square over 2G plus ZC plus all the major losses because we said we are uh, only considering major losses. So the major loss in pipe 1 which is going to be F1 L1 over D1 multiplied by V1 square over 2G plus the major loss in mm, pipe 3 which is F3 times L3 over D3 multiplied by V3 square over 2G. Okay, so we can now assume that PA equals to PC equals to PB equals to P atmosphere because they are all in the vicinity of the atmosphere so we can just assume that they equal to the atmospheric pressure and the atmospheric pressure if we assume we are um, only solving for the gauge pressure then uh, this PA equals to PC equals to PB equals to zero and we can, we can also say that uh, the velocity at point A equals to velocity at point B equals to velocity at point C. The velocity of the reservoir, please note the, I'm talking about the velocity at the reservoir and not the velocity at the pipe, right? So I'm talking about the velocity here, velocity here, and velocity here because these are the velocity of the uh, reservoir and the reservoir uh, is a very large reservoir. So this vertical velocity here is pretty small compared to the velocity in the pipe which is much larger so we can assume that the velocities at the reservoirs are also zero so now that we have these two uh, assumptions and uh, we can put them into uh, the energy equation so this term is going to go to zero this term is going to go to zero this term is going to be zero and this term is going to be zero and so we are only left with za and ZC is also equals to zero because we are at elevation um, zero. So we are only left with ZA equals to the losses. So ZA is going to be F1 times L1 over D1 times V1 square over 2G plus F3 multiplied by L, L3 over D3 multiplied by V3 square over 2G. So we uh, substitute the value of ZA, which is 100 foot, into this equation. So it's going to be 100 foot equals to F1. So F1 is a friction factor for all pipes, which is given in the problem is 0.02 over D1. So D1 is 1 foot, and um, we have 2G. So 2G, this is going to be 2 multiplied by 32.2 foot per, uh, per uh, second square multiplied by 1 over uh, D, where D is 1 foot. So I just put 1 foot multiplied by L1. So this is I factored from both equations, which is F um, over D uh, over 2G over D. So I factored it out multiplied by l1 so this is l1 which is uh, 1000 feet multiplied by v1 square plus l2 which is 400 multiplied y by v3 square okay so this is going to give me this energy equation from a to c is going to give me another equation which is 322 if you just calculate all the numbers and put in there you get 322 equals to V1 square plus 0.4 V3 square. Okay. So now we have two equations and uh, three unknowns. So we want another equation. So we do again and we uh, similarly write the energy equation from B to C. And we assume that the flow is going to go out of the out of here and it's going to come into uh, reservoir C. So we can write the energy equation from B to C. So it's going to be PB over gamma plus VB square over 2G plus ZB equals to PC over gamma plus VC square over 2G plus ZC plus F2, which is the uh, friction factor at pipe 2 multiplied by L2 over D2 times V2 square over 2G 
plus F3 multiplied by L3 over D3 multiplied by V3 score over 2G. So these are the major losses in the system from when we go from uh, pipe B to pipe C. Again, PB, PC are zero because they are in the vicinity of the atmosphere. VB and VC are also zero because they are the velocity of the reservoir and we can assume because the reservoir is very large they're almost zero so we are only left with zb equals to f2 times l2 over d2 times v2 square over 2g plus f3 multiplied by l3 over d3 times v3 square over 2g so now we just uh, substitute the values that are given in the problem into this equation and for the given conditions, we get 64.4 equals to 0.1.5 v2 square plus 0.4 v3 square. Okay, so this is the third equation. And uh, we have, um, we have three equations and three unknowns. So our unknowns are v1, v2, and V3, right? We don't know the uh, flow velocities and we want to find the flow rates in each uh, pipe. So we have three equations and uh, these are all nonlinear equations and one way to solve this, one way to solve it is just uh, simply combine all these equations together, okay? So you have this equation you have V3, which is going to be V1 plus uh, V2. So you just put there, uh, instead of V3, you put V1 and uh, V1 plus V2. And the same thing here. And then you get rid of V3, and then you are only left with two equations and two unknowns, V1 and V2. And then you uh, uh, remove uh, one, one, one of the unknowns from the equation, and then you will come up with only one equation and one unknown. And then uh, you will find some answers. You will find the answers for um, that unknown. The other way, which I'm going to try it here, and I'm going to show you is to use some trial and error to find the solutions. So we assume that V1 is a constant. Uh, then we find V3 from equation 2 here. Then after we find V3, we put it into... Uh, uh, here because we have v3 here so then we can find v2 from equation 3 and then we check if v1 plus v2 equals to v3 so we check it, whether uh, these three found v1 and v2 and v3 are gonna uh, satisfy the continuity equation otherwise we check another value of v1 so we do this again and again to find uh, they're relevant and uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> the appropriate uh, values for v1 v2 and v3 so if you do this again and again you will find that there is no solution with three real positive values of v1 v2 and v3 and this tells us and this implies that our assumption that fluid flows out of reservoir b was wrong okay so uh, the fluid does not flow out of reservoir b and this is wrong and flow actually goes into reservoir b okay so now we have to uh, change our assumption and rewrite the equations again because we couldn't find any answer for that so we write the energy uh, the continuity equation again so it's going to give me q1 equals to q2 plus q3 so this is q1 and then this is going to go this way now so this is going to go this way so we have q1 which is coming from here should equal to q2 plus q3 okay so this is the continuity equation and because again our uh, pipe diameters are equal v1 equals to d2 equals to d3 we can write v1 equals to v2 plus v3 so this is going to be my first uh, 
equation, my first new equation for the new uh, conditions. So again, I write the energy equations, and now I have energy equation from um, A to B. So from reservoir B, A to reservoir B, and from reservoir A to reservoir C. Okay, so I write the energy equations, and these are just uh, some simplified energy equations because I don't want to repeat everything again, but you know that PA equals to PB equals to PC equals to zero because uh, of the atmospheric pressure and also their velocity at the uh, reservoirs are also very small compared to the velocity of the pipe. So I can just write this energy equation from A to B and from A to C, something like this. And if you uh, put the numbers into this problem, into these uh, two energy equations, we are going to get given the data we are going to get these two equations, 258 equals to V1 square plus 0.5 V2 square and 322 equals to V1 square plus 0.4 V3 square. So now we are, uh, we have three new equations, right? So we have uh, this equation, this equation, and this equation, which are our three new equations and we want to um, solve this and see whether uh, how what would be the values of v1 v2 and v3 so we have three unknowns and again three equations two equations from energy equation and one from continuity So we subtract uh, subtract uh, subtract uh, in, uh, equation from 5 from 6 so what we are going to get is V3 square, and then uh, we just uh, multiply it by, uh, divided by 0.4, and what you get is going to give us V3 square equals to 160 plus 125 multiplied by V2 square. Right? So I just subtracted these two from each other to get rid of V1 and then I multiplied it, uh, uh, divided uh, all, everything by 0.4 to get to this equation. And this equation just gives me one relation between V3 and V2, which is V3 equals to the square root of 160 plus 125 multiplied by V2 squared. So I use equation 1 and rewrite equation uh, 5 again. So I'm going to get, uh, I'm, I again want to get rid of equation uh, V1. So I just write it down, 258 equals V2 plus V3 square plus 0.5 V2 square. And then this equals, instead of V3, I'm just going to write it uh, here instead of V3. I'm going to write V2 plus uh, square root of 160 uh, plus 1.25 V2 square and everything squared plus 0.5 V2 square. So with this, I'm only left with one equation and one unknown. And the unknown here is V2. So I, I simplify this equation and I get to this where 2 V2 multiplied by square root of 160 plus 1.25 v2 square equals to 98 minus 2.75 v2 square so i square both sides and i get to this equation v2 uh, to the power of 4 minus 460 multiplied by v2 square plus uh, 3748 equals to 0. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's uh, solve this equation and find the roots of this equation. So as you can see, 
this equation looks uh, very much like uh, like a quadratic equation right so uh, for this type of equations we use the quadratic formula to find the uh, solution of this v2 the roots of v2 okay so we can we can if you just assume that for example uh, your x is v2 square and then you can uh, this this equation is going to be converted into a, 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 a quadratic equation right so and you know the formula for a quadratic equation so you can simply find the um, uh, roots of x which is like v2 square in this uh, system okay so uh, you just substitute again uh, just to confirm again you just substitute uh, x uh, equals v2 square into this system and then you will get a quadratic equation and then you know the solutions for a quadratic equation so if you remember like uh, here we have like a, a this is going to be your b this is going to be your c and then you have a solution for quadratic equation and this is shown here so this is like you have to write minus uh, uh, so your x or v2 square here is going to be uh, minus b which is uh, minus 460 so this is your b and this is C and your A is just one which is this one uh, so it's going to be minus B plus minus uh, B square minus 4AC right so over 2 so this is going to be the answer for a quadratic uh, equation and this is the quadratic formula so V2 square is going to be minus B which is minus minus 460 plus minus square root of 460 square minus 4 times a a is 1 times 300 uh, c which is 3748 or 2 times a where a is b okay so this is going to be uh, your solution for a quadratic um, <clears throat> equation which is going to give me two answers so it's going to give me 460 plus minus 443.4 over 2 which is going to give me either 452 or 8.3 so v2 is going to be either 21 point foot per second or it's going to be 2.88 foot per second so we have to check it we have to check which of these answers are correct okay because one of these could be, uh, because you have uh, kind of squared the equation, so this could be like an artifact of squaring the equations, okay? So we have to figure out uh, which of these is uh, correct. So let's check both roots. Uh, first, we start with the bigger one, which is 21.3 foot per second. We put this into equation five. So in equation five, we had 258 equals to V1 square plus 0.5 V2 square. So this is gonna give me V1 equals to 5.558. We, we also put this into equation six. So uh, we have uh, 5.558 uh, from here. And then 322 equals v1 square plus 0.4 v3 square, which is going to give me v3 is 17.1. So now we have v1, v2, and v3. We put all of these into equation 4 and see whether these uh, kind of satisfy the continuity equation or not. So as you can see, v1 is 5.58. Does this equal to v2 plus v3? Of course not, because you can see that V2 is 17.1 plus V3 is um, 2, uh, 2 uh, V3 uh, yeah, is 17.1 and V2 is uh, 2, 21.3, right? So 21.3 and this equals to 38, uh, which does not equal to V1, which is 5.58. 
So V2 is not a valid route. So V2 equals to 21.3 foot per second is not a valid route. So this is wrong. So this is wrong. This does not satisfy all the three equations we have. One continuity and two energy equations. So what I do instead is I now uh, check V2. Let's check V2 equals to 2.88 foot per second. We put this into equation 5. Equation 5 gives me V1 equals to 15.93 foot per second. I put this into uh, I put V1 into equation 6 and then I get V3 equals to 13.5 foot per second. And then I check the continuity equation, whether these are going to satisfy this continuity equation. So V1 is 15.93. Does this equal to V2 plus V3? So V2 plus V3 is, uh, is 13.5 plus V2 is 2.88, which equals to 15.93. So yes, this also satisfies these uh, continuity equations. So all these three equations are satisfied. So V2 is the valid route for this uh, three reservoir system. So now we have found all three uh, velocities, V2, V3, and V1. So we can simply calculate the flow rates which was asked in the, in the uh, question from us. So Q1 equals to A1, uh, V1, which is going to be P4, P over 4 D1 square, which is the area of the pipe, multiplied by V1, so this is wrong, uh, this should be V1. Uh, so it's going to be P over 4 1 foot square multiplied by 15.9 foot per second is going to give me 12.5 foot cube over a second. The second value is Q2, which is going to give me A2, V2, which is A2 times 2.88 foot per second, which is V2 here, is going to give me 2.26 uh, foot cube per second into B. So this goes into reservoir B. And Q3 is going to be A3 times V3, or Q3 equals to Q1 minus Q2, which is 12.5 minus, from continuity equation, I can just write this down. And um, it's going to give me 12.5 minus 2.26 is going to give me 10.2 foot cube per second into C. Okay, so these are three flow rates of this problem. So this is coming from A, these two are going into B and C. So 12.5 foot cube per second is coming from reservoir E and it's going uh, 2.26 foot per foot cube per second of it is going to uh, reservoir B and 10.2 foot cube per second of it is going to go to um, reservoir C. So this is like a general question uh, for uh, three reservoir systems. As you can see, we have, we have to write the continuity equation and we have to write all the uh, possible uh, energy equations. Uh, we have to find, the fl this one is the one that we have to find the flow rates. And then uh, for the continuity equation, we can use the three reservoir system um, problems that we uh, talked about. And the, uh, the main unknown here is the direction of the flow that you have to determine what is the direction of the flow. So you first assume uh, or guess uh, direction and then see whether, that, uh, whether you can satisfy all the, con uh, all the uh, governing equations which are continuity and energy equations in your system with that assumption or not. And if not, you change the uh, direction into another one another direction and then you solve this again to find the correct uh, direction and also velocity or uh, flow rates in the system. So just note that this was kind of a um, simple problem in which we have we we had given the friction factor for all the pipes 
all the pipes had the same uh, diameter, all the pipes had the same um, uh, velocity diameter here, and and uh, the other thing is um, we did not have any minor losses. So this problem can be very, very difficult, as you can imagine, if we have minor loss, we, uh, we assume for the minor losses in the system, uh, we have different pipe diameters. Uh, we, have, we have to determine the friction factor for each pipe. So this is going to give us uh, we have to use like Moody diagram and other things and the formulas for loss coefficients and so this is going to give us a very difficult problem in which we have a very nonlinear problem I would say in which we have to determine a lot of things uh, so um, I just uh, this was just a simple example that how you can tackle this but uh, with the information that were given before for other type of problems where uh, three type of problems that we solved and where we have to determine the head losses you now have a, have a good feeling that how you have to uh, kind of tackle this kind of problems so you have to write continuity equation uh, and also uh, energy equations and assume uh, direction for the flow direct for the flow and uh, solve this equation and see whether uh, you can get a you can get a solution that satisfies all these uh, equations all together or not okay so this was the last uh, example for a multiple pipe systems and uh, the next topic I want to talk uh, before go, uh, before going to the hydraulic engineering so this is gonna be like the end of our uh, kind of I would say uh, pipe systems and pi uh, designing for pipe um, pipe uh, pipes in, in any kind of civil and environmental engineering uh, or mechanical engineering um, kind of applications so uh, after this we are going to go through the hydraulic engineering which is like open channel flows but before going uh, there i want to just talk about one point that i had not uh, talked before and it's in your uh, problem set and that's about uh, pump efficiency so we talked about pumps before where we uh, were having uh, uh, where we were talking about uh, work and energy equations and the way they add energy to uh, mm, to the system and um, so we also saw some examples in the uh, problem sets and also in your uh, midterm exam but one, one simple note that uh, I, I had not talked about is, is the efficiency of this pump. So this is, for example, a pump uh, where um, it's kind of increase, uh, adding to the uh, energy to a system. But we did not talk about the efficiency. So all these pumps have an, have an efficiency, right? So we cannot find a pump in which it can um, directly give all the work that was done by the shaft to the pump to to the fluid directly right because because of the thermodynamic uh if you remember from the third one of the thermodynamic principles in which nothing can be 100 percent efficient right so there is always some loss due to heat due to other things that might occur and this is what we call efficiency so the efficiency of a pump is which we show which we show it with like something like eta is w dot is the work that uh, the pump gives to the fluid over the the work w dot the rate of the work which shaft the shaft of the pump gives uh, the shaft gives to the pump right so that shaft that is kind of rotating how much work it is giving to the pump and how much of that, how much pump uh, gives that uh, power or gives that uh, rate of work to the fluid. So this is called efficiency. So if you remember the W dot pump to fluid, we had a formula for that which was H pump, which is the head of the pump multiplied by gamma times Q, right? And Q is your discharge, gamma is just rho G. And so over w dot shaft to pump so the only thing that uh, will change in our previous formula is this uh, if you just rearrange all these terms you will get is uh, this efficiency factor so 
we had this formula before where we had w dot shaft uh, to pump over gamma q equals to the head of the pump but we just now multiply it by uh, efficiency factor which is eta pump which is not always one so in most of the problems previously we assumed that the efficiency of the pump is one but in reality the efficiency can be something between uh, zero and one so it's usually smaller than one uh, it can be 0.7 it can be 0.75 it can be 0.2 and uh, this is how uh, the formula is changed so just note these in your um, in your homework because in your recent uh, homework I have uh, one we have one problem in which uh, the efficiency of the pump is given which is uh, you have to use this formula if you want to uh, solve that problem so this was about pump efficiency and after this uh, in the next session we are going to uh, start a new topic which is hydraulic engineering and open channel flows thank you very much everyone